come to us um, and meet us here today. So my name is Anastasia. I'm a business development manager in life uh, here. I am hosting the webinar and um, which is dedicated to uh, SAP commerce search optimization. And our speakers today are a leading SAP consultant at iTransition, Alina. Hi. And uh, hi, Alina and Artem, our leading SAP architect. Um, he is also with us today. Fantastic. Well, so uh, what I want to say is that being an SAP Silver partner, iTransition delivers SAP commerce solutions that bring efficiency to medium sized and to enterprise companies. And um, we have completed dozens um, of different projects, uh, obviously SAP based, uh, and those projects were of different scales. Um, so relying on the experience gained during this um, journey, uh, today we would like to share some of the techniques uh, for SAP commerce search optimization with you. And um, well, as you can see in the agenda, First, we will state the problem of SAP commerce uh, based website search engines and why potential buyers um, leave the site after maybe just one failed query. And next, uh, we'll move forward to the um, to the questions which uh, our speakers will unveil and on like on the side of practical search optimization techniques and show uh, how optimized search uh, mechanism uh, mechanisms can work on real projects. And the last one uh, will be uh, the discussion of questions which may arise. So we very welcome of the question uh, any questions you have uh, to put down in the chat. Uh, so uh, please feel free. Uh, we will circle back to these uh, questions at the end of the uh, webinar and we'll be happy to talk them through at um, well, at a closer uh, plans. So um, also, please get ready uh, for some interactions. We've prepared some questions and polls. Uh, we'll appreciate uh, your partake in, in this whole process. And well, I guess let's um, let's begin. So once again, uh, thank you for being with us today. And um, I'll start uh, probably with the very first poll. Uh, yeah, you can probably check out uh, the chat part. Um, you can see there uh, the very first poll. Uh, we will uh, very appreciate your answers. So the question is um, actually dedicated to our dear audience. Uh, how many retail website visitors go directly to the search bar? So please make your choices. We'll give a while. That's interesting. Waiting for for the rest who wanted to put down the answer. I can see that. Oh, some numbers are definitely competing. Okay, time the responses. The situation changes all the time. <laughs> Yeah, but I think I can I can reveal correct answer. Am yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. But as for the poll, I can say that uh, the trending number for now is sixty percent. So, Arjun, please tell us: is that the correct number? Uh, it's about that. Uh, but according to Biomat Institute, uh, forty-three percent of users on retail websites go directly to the search bar, and more than twice of them are more likely to buy when they search. 
uh, due to the increased level of purchase intent from searches, they're known to convert up to six times higher uh, than the average known search with a tab. Um, knowing these numbers may look obvious here yeah, to invest in your search functionality in order to increase your sales. Uh, but let's take a look on how the search process really looks like uh, on some of the SAP commerce based sites. For this purpose, for this quick demo, I would like to share my. Uh, I'd like to share my. Uh, to share my browser and let me please know if you see it. Yes, we yeah, do. I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is just one of the examples, but let's assume that I'm a, as a potential buyer, I'm about to buy or and I'm about to renovate my bathroom and I'm about to buy some brand new best top. And I found some link in the Internet or via ads and uh, just want to buy concrete. Product here, yeah. I want it. Um, I want some best top, so I wanted acrylic. I wanted snow, white color, and of course, I wanted bus top. And let's see on the results. Uh, and oops, I didn't get the results actually, and it may look like a an acceptable results for me because uh, I was prompting a uh, pretty exact query. Yeah, uh, I am as a potential buyer um, should think that um, the site either is broken or the site doesn't contain or doesn't carry uh, required products. Yeah, but the funny thing is that actually this site contains uh, these products and you can find them easily via catalog navigation yeah uh yeah they have <laughs> at least several different products uh acrylic and white bath tops and it might be frustrating for me as a potential buyer and i would leave this site and go away to another site uh, this is just one of the examples and let me get back to the presentation and once again I want you to get me a sign if you see my screen, my presentation. Yeah, guys, if you're having any technical issues, please put down in the chat mm -hmm. also. We will try to help you by all the means we can. Okay, I suppose you see my, my slides. Uh, yeah, and this is a problem. Stacia, do you have such problems in your in your life? I suppose so. Well, definitely. First and foremost, I could say that I didn't expect such a vivid example, but I def I, I I I do have to share that uh, I actually came across once in a while uh, across something very similar. And um, well, I actually have a question uh, to the audience. Uh, we have another poll in the chat. You can see it now. So uh, the question is like, how do you think how many online shops provide such poor UX in the uh, search process? Just very interested to know like how often this problem comes up and did you experience anything like such? I would like to answer, but I know the, the answer. <laughs> I know the yeah, answer. <laughs> yeah, you did the research. You prepared for this webinar. This is unfair. Let's give it a while. Let's see what the uh, well, how the guesswork will show uh, the result. Oh, we have different kinds of answers. And what is the leading uh, one? Antonia thinks uh, that just one. What is the leading answer? Yeah, uh, let's probably summarize. Um, the leading right now is about 60%. So is it correct? 
Okay, so let me share the result and the correct, uh, correct answer. Um, so you will be surprised, or maybe you will not. <laughs> but according to Biomart Institute, around 61% uh, of e-commerce sites uh, perform below an acceptable search performance. And this is um, misaligned with the user um, actual uh, behavior and expectations. So not being able to find what they're looking for is the reason number one why users um, leave the online store without buying anything. And um, also, according to Nelson Norman, 17 to 20 percent of users give up after just one failed query. Yeah, unfortunately. And um, in this case, we assume that the main problem is that in the world of SAP commerce, um, most of the service providers do not really care about the search process and moreover about its key performance indicators. And it can be due to different reasons um, like uh, ignorance of the search uh, process importance, um, insufficient expertise in search mechanics, unclear vision of users' behavior and, and needs and so on. But um, we believe that every business is unique and it requires a separate deep analysis of the um, user search process. And uh, while delivering um, SAP commerce based projects, uh, we have analyzed tons of different uh, search queries and we um, recognize several common user search patterns. But um, unfortunately, these search queries um, couldn't be handled gracefully in the basic SAP commerce. Um, since the result can be um, a worsened user uh, user experience, um, reduction in conversions and decrease in sales and so on. So um, let's speak about how we can optimize um, this low efficient search. And um, um, now we are presenting to you our six main techniques that we are applying to our customers and that uh, help them to deal with a low efficient search. Um, yeah, Artem, could you please proceed? Sure. Uh, thank you for introduction, Lina. Uh, yeah, to cope with all the problems we saw and the problems mentioned by Lina and many more, uh, a tradition extended SAP search functionality with some custom mechanics or techniques. And let's speak about these techniques. Uh, the first technique is that you should be aware of end client search patterns. After a deep audit of user search patterns, we identified that many potential buyers, uh, and it's really surprise, and especially in B2B domains, prefer searching uh, items directly by the list of stock keeping units or product codes rather than natural product descriptions. Uh, more than that, some B2B buyers tend to search products not only by SKUs of client catalog, but by SKUs of competitors catalog. Uh, the default SAP uh, search model doesn't handle such queries effectively in order to present the most relevant results. To facilitate this, we have implemented a feature that allows users to easily search for items by their stock keeping units. Uh, the system comes not only through the internal database of products, uh, but also through the competitors catalog. If a user searches for product by its competitor's code, uh, our system matches items and returns a relevant identical product from the uh, customer's online catalog. Uh, and let me share one good example on how this pattern may look like on some random uh, on some random uh, SAP commerce-based site. And once again, for this, I I would like to share my screen again. Can you hear this beautiful, amazing, amazing, this amazing design site? Yeah, we do. Okay. And uh, so something wrong with my miles okay i'm here again sorry yeah uh, this is some random site uh, and online shop and i want to search uh, some items some products with their exact codes yeah sometimes it happens because um, i can't search them by natural descriptions or i want to get the full 
uh, I want to, to get the results page with all the desired products even from different categories. Uh, for this, I just enter a prompt uh, this product codes or SKUs and perform search. So what I get is actually a relevant uh, relevant page with relevant results. Uh, I entered some product codes and in return, in result, I got what I was asking for, actually. Let's see, this product, yeah, this product contains this code, one of these codes, yeah. And let's check this product. And yeah, this product also contains this code and looks like it's okay, like it's could handle my non-trivial uh, query and this side gets a mark <laughs> in this uh, handling such queries, yeah. And I'm pretty happy with this. This is just an example how on how such button may look like. And let me get back to the presentation again. Uh -huh. And Alina, could you please share with us the results of such implementation for one of our customers? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you take a look um, at this page, you will see the um, results of one of our customers who usually had around uh, two or four percent of B2B sales and they couldn't increase these indicators in any way. Um, but once we implemented the feature that um, allowed them um, that allows users to easily search for items by their SKUs, um, B2B sales of our customer uh, grew up and achieved uh, 6%. Yeah, and even more, but yeah, this absolutely. is because of applying some other techniques. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And let's go to the next technique I would like to present to you. And next technique is uh, sometimes you need to make your search a little bit smarter than it is. Uh, as long as visitors tend to enter product characteristics, we implemented functionality to process discrete and range product attributes passed in search queries. Uh, discrete uh, attributes are textual characteristics like color, material, purpose, origin, and many more, while uh, range ones are, uh, are numeric values, yeah, like price or dimensions. Uh, the default SAP commerce search uh, often fail search engine, I mean, often fails to interpret such non-trivial and contextual queries correctly. So a huge amount of search requests uh, lead to near their conversion rates due to irrelevant results. Uh, the basic idea behind our solution was to make some extra analysis of the user search query, extracting some precise metadata and enriching target search requests with this meta. As an outcome, users get actually relevant search results where product with desired characteristics or attributes are ranked at the top. Yeah, it may look like an obvious and simple solution, but some non-trivial obstacles are hidden inside. One of them uh, is the fact that buyers tend to search uh, the same class of products in numerous ways, yeah? Like uh, I want to buy 34 inches display in silver color or wide monitor from 80 to 90 centimeters wide is actually the same, yeah? And uh, should lead to the same class of relevant results, yeah? And while doing this analysis, we must stick to the search performance SLA in order not to break uh, user experience. And on this slide, you can actually see uh, some prototype on how it may look like, yeah? When user enters some contextual rich product uh, query, yeah? Uh, like black thermal printer. Uh, our system actually can identify the meaning uh, of keywords and some extract some metadata. And you can see this by take a taking a glance on this message, yeah, like this search engine recognized that um, 
potential buyer uh, looks for black printer, yeah, with concrete printing technology, direct thermal, yeah, and actually potential buyer gets the most relevant results uh, with the desired characteristics. Uh, Alina, can you please demonstrate how this technique works on the example of our project? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So um, here we'd like to present the result of another customer. Um, it's a leading European supplier of stationery and office goods um, who had uh, who had been trying to increase their conversion using different tools, but uh, the maximum growth they achieved was around 7%. Uh, but uh, our, our implementations um, helped them to boost such relevance and led to a 20% growth of conversions. Um, as compared with the conversion from the basic search. Yeah, and it's, I believe it's outstanding results. Yeah, yeah. Uh, getting the, all the specifics of the, this of this particular domain. Yeah. And yeah. Sorry, guys, I would like just quickly uh, drag your attention to another poll uh, we have. Um, please check it out in the chat. Uh, the poll is about which is the result of a bad search experience. Make your choices. Uh, we're wondering to know what you think. Like what? Like maybe you you will be answering from your own experience, or just make a guess. Work. Feel free. I can see two. Only two answers trending. No one likes like smaller order sizes or brand disloyalty. <laughs> That's interesting. I opt personally for brand disloyalty. <laughs> <laughs> well, at some extent, this actually can influence. Yeah. OK. Well, we have 10 responses. Maybe if someone else wants to give an answer, feel free. Uh, but I will just summarize that um, the option all is the most trendy one and talking about very specific choices, um, the lower search conversion shared um, the results with the smaller order sizes. So um, colleagues, what do you have to share about this? Please unveil the truth. I believe as I said, all of these uh, options are true, yeah, and bad search experience leads to bunch of problems yeah and that's why uh, we are here to present you some techniques and i believe we should move on am i right yeah yeah okay uh next technique uh actually uh you can make sales even if there are no search results yeah uh, may sound quite mm, counterintuitive, yeah, but it's true. Uh, Shoppers assume that if uh, search, uh, sorry, uh, if uh, site returns no results message or no results page, yeah, it means either the shop doesn't carry uh, required products or the website is broken at all, yeah, but. Uh, you can place some components on this page in order to boost your sales. And for one of our customers, we developed such components and made the system return at least something and range the results in line with the user's requests. So uh, a few examples on how uh, these companies may look like. Uh, you can show some recommended products, yeah. These companies may show a list of common attractive to buy products if there are no search replies, sorry, no search results for certain user queries. Or you can share with the user, with a potential buyer, you can share a list with links to related requests, yeah, following which buyers can find similar products um, and or even other products. Uh, once again, I want you to I want uh, to share with you a good example on this technique, how it may uh, look like in real world. So once again, uh, 
I would like to share my browser and to get response from you if you see something. Yeah, we see. OK. It makes me crazy to switch windows. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah, this is Wickles. And let's say I want to buy top soil, whatever it means, top soil with discount. Yeah. And let's take a look at results. So uh, we have no results message. Yeah. But with this, we have a pretty good, uh, pretty good results. Yeah, I mean, pretty good uh, search um, items. Yeah, and uh, what actually was done by this site is uh, this site recognized our um, query. Yeah, and just omitted uh, the this junky part. Yeah, and presented us uh, search results for. Uh, top soil, yeah, it's, it's called alternative request. Yeah, it showed us uh, some products for alternative requests, and with I'm pretty happy with these results, and I'm able to choose something and to buy something. Yeah, uh, and it's quite acceptable for me. Yeah, this is one of the examples, uh, and you can place. Uh, any component or you can place any logic on the no results page. And yeah. Alina, could you please share with us once again result, some results on how we boosted uh, how we boosted search performance with these optimizations? Yeah, uh, sure. So um, as you may see for uh, one of our customers, and as you remember, it was an international marketplace. We were able to achieve more relevance. And now the no result search makes up to 4% of all day online sales. And that's a very good uh, result for no, no result search, right? Yeah, even 1% is a good result. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It, yeah, it's far. OK, uh, let's proceed to the next one. And the next one technique we usually apply for our customers, uh, we help them to get a better vision of their bias habits. Yeah. Uh, knowing what customers have searched on, clicked on, added to their cart means knowing what they need. To provide customers with the ability to trace and analyze all user actions within a single search request, from entering uh, request actually and product selection to actions in the cart, we implemented search query fixation. Every search session is assigned with a unique uh, query identifier uh, that is further given to every event triggered by a user. And let me show a small quick video demo how it looks like. Uh, first of all, potential buyer enters some query and on his first uh, click we fix this search session fix, fixate sorry this uh, search session and we assign it with the unique identifier later on uh, buyer make some actions like uh, toggle some facets or filters go to product page uh, and somehow in uh, interact with product page by, let's say, adding product to the basket or to the cart, and later on moving to to the cart. Yeah, changing some um, product quantity, items quantity, and finally submitting the request. All these actions allows uh, to allows our customers to get a full vision. Yeah, of uh, their bias habits and their paths from uh, actual um, entering the request to their submitting order. And Alina, I would like to ask you to to share the yeah. results. Uh, yeah, could you please repeat the video? Uh, and uh, at this time, I'll mm -hmm. tell the result 
Yeah, of our customer who used to analyze user clicks with the third party tools, but they couldn't understand or couldn't get a clear understanding of user behavior. Uh, but now if the um, search query identifies fixed, they can trace all user actions uh, within a single search request. And um, as a result, our customer noted that such transparency and understanding of um, user behavior helped them to make information-based decisions. Yeah, and I'm sorry we have no uh, charts there <laughs> on this result, but let's proceed to the next technique, uh, the last but not the least. Yeah. Uh, you, if you want to save some resources, you have to reduce spending on administration efforts. Uh, keeping the system in its actual state uh, really is not an easy task because sometimes you have to actualize your search data settings on a daily basis to reflect uh, the bias behavior. To make this process automated, we supply tools for massive data upload export uh, and this empowered admins to upload, change, uh, delete, and export configuration that data effectively. Thus, uh, search admins can avoid human factor errors while customers save hundreds of person hours. Um, person hours, yeah. Uh, on this screen, you can see a screenshot uh, from real product system. Uh, from SAP Commerce Administrative Console. And this is just a piece of uh, configuration uh, that is need to be done, but some mechanisms uh, require tons or thousands yeah, of, such, uh, of such configuration data, uh, lines of such data. So sometimes it may be really frustrating for admins to enter this data manually by keyboard and their mouse. So, Alina, please show what results of optimization or automation can bring. Yeah, sure. So, uh, this is my favorite mechanic. Um, and now you understand, you understand why. Uh, so, here you can see the example of uh, one of our customers uh, where we achieved uh, up to 12 times reduction of, of admin efforts uh, related to the configurations uh, of search mechanics. And what is really interesting, and at this point we have found later that um, such reduction in admin's work lead to a positive effect to their work life balance. Yeah, actually, it's reflected in grow growing time. Yeah, time. I mean, it's reflected in uh, growth of time wasted in social media. Yeah, it's, it's that's absolutely. why I like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. and but this is a different topic to discuss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's actually a very interesting result. So, uh, guys, um, if that's probably. Uh, all the most uh, planned uh, topics we wanted to share. So I'd like to thank you guys. Um, well, Alina, Artem, thank you for the detailed presentation, first and foremost. Um, and uh, well, the list, uh, the listed techniques, obviously just some of them, and um, we shared on how the search process can be optimized, but this list can be endless, to be honest because uh, each business and each domain has its own set of pardons and its own uh, way how potential buyers perform product search. So um, so let's probably move to the uh, to the next session, which is uh, questions and answers. Um, and I can see that our our guests already put some questions. And by the way, if you still have some questions and you haven't put them down into the chat, this is a high time to do that. I really encourage you to do so. And meantime, I will just scroll it back to the uh, the very first ones. Um, let's take a look. So. So here is one, if if I'm correct, the question from Mary, uh, she wonders, just to be clear, what do you exactly mean by basic SAP search features? A question to our experts. Um, guys, could you please comment on it? Mm. Okay, Lina, 
let me take this one. Uh, yeah, SAP Commerce uh, is a ready to go solution in most cases, and it contains a lot of uh, uh, a lot of out of box features uh, regarding to search. Yeah, it uh, facet navigation. Uh, it's some kind of uh, search redirects, some boosts, uh, and many more. But we experience our experience says that sometimes there are a lot of patterns and we listed some of them that are not covered with these basic components or these basic functionality uh, that's why we developed uh, some amazing features and delivered it to our customers uh, it's only because uh, the default tcp commerce search features doesn't handle uh, these problems. Yeah, uh, the list of uh, default features is pretty broad. Yeah, but they works good only on some um, some um, broad, not some narrow cases. Yeah, but not broad cases and not uh, not on some specific patterns. Okay, understood. Well, thank you, Artem. Um, if you don't mind, I will move to the next one. We have one more question from Olivia. Uh, she wonders, um, are the positive examples that you share actually your completed projects? Very interesting question, uh, guys. Yeah, uh, let me take the answer for you for this question. <laughs> Yeah, so I would I would love to answer your question, but unfortunately we can't just because all our customers are under NDA. So thank you for your questions, but I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, so well, definitely I, I I would like to add that definitely we do uh, have some practical experience and only just based on real practical experience you can Absolutely. share the knowledge. So that's. A little bit weak answer, but we are very sorry for that. All right, so um, OK, what else I have here? Um, so another question from Mary G. Uh, if I were to start up, uh, optimizing search right now, what one easy way to get started and see immediate results? So Mary is pretty impatient. What yeah. have we to share with Mary? <laughs> Maybe some quick tips. Yeah, I have a general uh, tip for such impatient uh, visitors or customers. First of all, you have to make uh, some audit yeah, on your search mechanics or on your and clients and buyers uh, habits as we, as we showed before. Uh, yeah, you should start with some audit or with some analysis uh, and choose one of the techniques which will bring you the most uh, positive results. I mean, uh, that will be the most effective for you, yeah, for your particular case. Yeah, but you should go with, uh, you should go with analysis at first. Well, and for my perspective, I can add that you can also look up for uh, an advisor or a consultant from a third party. So um, moving forward to the next one. So we have a question from Ekaterina Maximova. Um, Ekaterina wonders, um, you said that there are six search optimization techniques, but you have mentioned only five. Do we miss something, guys? Uh, do we have a price for the most attentive visitor or tender or viewer? Uh, I don't have uh, an answer for this question. Thank you for your attention, but uh, <laughs> there are much more than five or six techniques. Uh, and uh, we can discuss maybe uh, other techniques uh, you can send me or Alina or Anastasia some questions, yeah, and we are open to answer all of your questions uh, regarding to search optimizations. Uh, yeah, but good try, good try. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. So um, moving forward then to question from Mar Mary. Has so many questions. Mary, we really appreciate your engagement uh, with us today. That's uh, that's really cool. So how do I select which optimization technique is the right for me? Wonders Mary. And she's got another part of the question. Are they each mutually exclusive or should they be used together? It's a very interesting one. Uh, yeah, and this question could be divided into two questions, as I see. As the first one, how do I select which optimization technique is the right for me? Uh, as I mentioned before, yeah, you should go with analysis and based, based on the results of this analysis, you should pick the most effective technique, the most effective one. Yeah, it depends on certain... Um, it depends on certain conditions, yeah, uh, which uh, technique to pick or to choose to implement. And are they each mutually exclusive or should they be used together? Uh, they are not mutually exclusive. It's absolutely true. You can use them together. Uh, you can just take... Um, the only techniques you need here, yeah, the most effective ones for you that works for you. Um, I don't see any problems there to use them together. All right. Thank okay. you, Mary, Mary G. Thank you for this question. Yeah, feel free to add um, some more. Uh, so, uh, moving to question from Mike uh, Robson. Mike wonders, what do you need from my side to start a project on search optimization? That's a very direct question. We need instructions. Yeah, and, yeah, and I have a direct answer. <laughs> uh, search optimization. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, uh, all the projects begin with. Uh, audit yeah or with analysis and we must go through this phase uh, to to get knowledge of your system um, of your search processes of your mechanics and to, in order to bring the best results and to uh, and to advise you something yeah sometimes uh, it take maybe a week or maybe two weeks yeah to get acquainted with your system uh, to ask you correct questions about it and to get answers but it's a first step yeah first phase uh, we have to go through okay so now we know 